Hello, Keith Hayes here. Thank you for spending a few moments with me to understand how you can use a simple, inexpensive and pragmatic system of governance to always satisfy the CQC and make sure your dental practice is even better. It will help you meet the GDC standards and it could save you thousands of pounds and many sleepless nights. The system I'm about to show you in just a few minutes is used and trusted by over 700 practices of all shapes and sizes and it will work for you too. It's a simple system and has been called the blueprint by a certain popular. So here I am going to log in. You will see that we've got a list of steps on the left hand side and, and basically our, sim our simple system is divided into one, two and three steps. We've also given you an update each month of everything that we've added to the system to help remind you. So if we look at the first part first, this is the virtual CQC inspector. This is a document which I took from the CQC inspection, which actually illustrates all of the questions that you would be asked and your patients would be asked and your team will be asked at a CQC inspection. So for example, have you ever had a medical emergency? There are a number of questions that lead on from this. And also, who maintains the medical emergency equipment? Who signs the checklists? What does it look like? So throughout this system, we have tried to provide you with very simple documents so that you can produce the evidence to show the CQC what you do. So here's an example of the medical emergency checklist, which we've used in 2017. And here you have the medical emergency drugs which you are required to keep. You mark the expiry dates and when you reorder them because sometimes they take a little bit longer to get. And these are the medical emergency equipment that you would use and the dates in which you replace batteries and pads and what have you. Uh, you need to put your practice details, uh, practice name up the top here because it's highlighted in yellow and also the name of the person that is undertaking to do this on a weekly basis. They will put their initials over the day on which they've done it throughout the year. And you can mark the once yearly annual uh, CPR training that you have in your practice uh, on this calendar. You can also mark when you do a little practice session, which is often useful to do. OK, so we're going to go back to the system now. Um, you are required to have a system of governance, you know, but it's a bit like belonging to the gym. You can pay thousands of pounds for it. But if you don't actually use it, it doesn't make you fit. So how do you use this system of governments? Well, uh, I will show you what it looks like. It's, it's quite simple. It's in 98 pages, which is a few thousand less than our competitor compliance advisors. Um, and I've highlighted everything in yellow to help you go through the document quite quickly to add your practice details. So for example, if you double click on this, you can just take this yellow band out and put your practice name or logo. And then it's on all of the pages throughout the document. So I put in examples of where you might want to have a mission statement. Maybe you do or maybe you don't. If you do want to have a mission statement, I've even suggested one that you could adopt if you want to, or you may want to put your own in. If you wanted to use that one, all you need to do is to delete that part, and then it's automatically in your system, okay? As you go through here, you see I've divided uh, all of the CQC governance into 11 fundamental standards. So I've mapped the CQC system here. The first four fundamental standards uh, go in the blue section. The next three fundamental standards, which are all to do with safety, go in the red section. And the last four fundamental standards, which are all to do with management, go in the grey last section. I peppered the whole system with lots of ideas on things that you can do and things that I know the CQC are going to want you to do. So the most important thing is that you've got a simple governance system which you can all use. But now how do you prove that you're actually using it? Well, the simplest way would be if you had a task manager so this is a task manager, it's a computerized diary, and what I've done is I've pre-listed it with all of the things that you would need to remember in your practice. It will have your practice name at the top here, and it's got a list of all the things that you want to remember through the year. 
You don't want to maybe remember all of them. Uh, you just tick the ones that you want to be reminded of. And if you tick this box where it says yes, it will remind you by sending you an email. You can then decide which date you want to do these particular things on. It will come up with a diary. You indicate which date you want. And then when you want that date, you save the changes. And it will tell you that it's saved the changes. So next time you just want to use your diary or look at your diary, you don't have to configure it anymore because it's already done. You just go to the tasks. The tasks will then come up with the month. Uh, November is where we are now. This is the day we are. And these are the things that are uh, heading down at us in the next couple of weeks. So these are the tasks that you would be expecting to do. You've already put them in there. If you decide, for example, that uh, you don't want to do the dip test for the ultrasonic bath on that particular date, uh, which is Thursday the 23rd, you might be want to do it on Friday the 24th. That's OK. You just click the 24th and you save it and it moves it across now to the 24th. Now, when you come to that day, uh, and you've done that job, you can actually just say, well, I've done that now, clicked it, uh, so you've completed it, and it's taken it off of your diary, but it's not disappeared, it's moved it on by three months, because it knows that is the correct interval for you to use. The CQC really like this system, because it means you're never going to forget anything, and it also means that if you're not here for any period of time, uh, someone else in your team, uh, practice, can actually see what you were going to do and help you out by doing some of those tasks because it actually describes how to do them as well. Okay, so how else can you indicate that you use the governance system without forgetting things? Well, it's really important that you have some sort of system of practice meetings. So I've already tried to help you by designing or suggesting some practice meetings that you could have through the year. So I've suggested 10 possible practice meetings and if you go into the library you can find the document uh, which is the practice uh, meeting agendas to cover this year 2017. I'm just about to publish the ones for 2018. So we've produced a template for you uh, and what you do is you just pick up uh, whichever meeting it is that you want to do. Say, for example, you wanted to do this first meeting. You just copy it and paste it into the template, and then you've got your first meeting already arranged. And it will remind you of the policies which are due for update as and when they are through the year, and you will find all of those in the library. So finally, how can you prove that your practice is actually doing all this stuff and all of the team are involved? Because this is really important. It's a teamwork. OK, so it's a one, two, three step system. We've talked about the virtual CQC inspector. We've talked about your governance system. Now we're going to talk about the proof of the pudding, which is the poison chalice. So if I just highlight it now and we go to how to use it, the first thing you'll come to is you need to configure it. In other words, you need to set it up for your practice. It will already have your practice name at the top here, but you need to make sure you've got the right numbers of rooms in here. So, for example, it will already have a general health and safety section because we know everyone needs to do that. It will already have this strange section called Your Verdict, please, because we want all of the team to give their opinion on stuff. Uh, but it might have here, for example, three dental surgeries. Well, I don't know. Maybe you've only got two. So you click two and you save the changes. All right. And then the next time you want to actually do the poison chalice, you don't need to configure it because it's already done. You just go straight to the questionnaire here. This is the questionnaire. So as you know, we just altered the number of surgeries you got. We made it two. Uh, and you've got all the different sections which you'd need to answer the questions. And as you do, you need to save the questionnaire. So for example, if you were going to do the general health and safety section first, which is quite a good idea, you'll go down these questions. And a lot of them are yes, no questions. Do you have a health and safety law poster? Is it current? So it should be post 2013, November 2013. So we'll say yes, it is. OK. Have you done a recent fire risk assessment? This is something you can do yourself. We have put an updated fire risk assessment into the library so you can do it. Let's say you've just done that. Yes. OK. 
So now we're going to save the questionnaire. It's very important you do this. So when you save it, it will update it with the new date and time on which you saved it. Next time you come in here, you want to answer a few more questions. You can open the saved questionnaire. You can continue answering the questions provided you save it. You can view how you're getting on by viewing the score sheet. As you can see, we haven't answered many of the questions so far, just two out of 27 on the general health and safety. But you can save the whole thing when it's completed as a downloaded PDF document, which you can show the CQC or the NHS if they come to inspect your practice as to how you monitor the standards you provide. Another standard and audit which you are required to do, as you know, is the six monthly IPS audit. Sometimes people have found it difficult to find it, so I've taken the document and put it on the right path for system and have already labelled it up with your practice name at the top. Okay, it's still divided into the seven same sections that you uh, know and love from HTML 105. Um, and as you answer the questions, it, uh, uh, it gives you a helpful uh, reference to HTML 105 and you can view the score sheet. I've only partly filled this in. You can see I've scored 86% in this particular section, but you'll need to save it uh, as a PDF so you can download it and you can show the CQC uh, how you've achieved uh, compliance and what level of compliance you've achieved in your IPS audit. If you've got plenty of time on your hands and you wish to demonstrate how compliant you are uh, because you're expecting to have a CQC or an NHS inspection visit uh, to your practice, uh, then you may wish to use this document. This is quite a long document and it's color coded in as red uh, is something which uh, you need to attend to immediately or maybe it's already expired or you've forgotten about it altogether. Amber is something which is going to expire in the next month and green is something which is current and you don't need to worry about. So you can put down here uh, your current situation with regard to all these things and you can actually view a summary sheet if you want. Uh, so for example you can see on this particular example that the pressure vessel certificate for the compressor has expired last month. Uh, and that the illuminator magnifier is in use, uh, um, but uh, it, it's going to need replacement. Anyway, it's a little summary that you can use to make sure that you're on track with things. I've also added into the system uh, several areas which um, partly CQC related, but largely uh, is something which the GDC would be very interested to know that you're doing. So for example, it is now necessary for you to do personal development planning and for you to have an active plan in place by January 2018. Now some people may not be too familiar with why you do a personal development plan or what it needs to look like. So I've, I've produced a little document here uh, to explain how you do a personal development plan and actually uh, to test yourself a little bit as you're going along to see how you're getting on. I've also included a cl clinical risk management module. Uh, this is to help you uh, be certain that you reach the standards necessary when you're, for example, diagnosing or uh, prescribing crown and bridge treatment, periodontal treatment, uh, to make sure that you are, are reaching the standards which you would be expected to reach. So I'll just show you what that looks like. Here's a clinical risk man management document. We cover all these sorts of subjects uh, and we've given you a little indication of how to approach some of these things with simple do's and don'ts. Uh, and for example, uh, when you're planning to, make, uh, to do crown and bridge work, please make sure you're aware of what the patient is actually wanting so you're not treating a stranger. I've also included a module on NHS contract management so that you can see how you can maintain your NHS contract uh, ethically and not get yourself into trouble. Well, let me show you what that looks like. So we've included lots of good ideas on things to look out for to make sure that you're not going to get yourself into difficulty with an NHS contract.
Finally, there's a library. Now, you're not going to need all the documents in the library all at once. There are over 200 documents and they're all in alphabetical order. So if you can't find something, the easiest way is to just go to the All Documents section and look, it, look up for it in alphabetical order. There is a search function here as well. And if you want to, for example, uh, uh, locate a policy, they're all in the Policies section. They're all Word documents and you can just download them and add your practice details to them as you need. If you want to do an audit, there are lots of audits down here and there's some uh, suggested audits which I would like you to do and which I believe the GDC would also like you to do. Uh, they're all quite easy to follow and there are descriptive notes on um, how to write reflectively on the results. There's a large section on um, clinical aspects and so all sorts of clinical aspects which I have found interesting and which I think probably most of you would also find interesting to look at. Um, so that's the system really. There's, a, there's an awful lot of material in there. You won't need it all of the time, but some of the time you'll be jolly glad you have got it. Most of the time you'll be just using the governance system, the meeting documents, the poison chalice, the IPS audit and some clinical auditing tools. We are accessible seven days a week, so please ask your questions. We, we aim to get you an answer within minutes and certainly the same day. And that includes holidays and bank holidays as well. OK, well, thank you very much for listening. We do hope to welcome you on board Right Path 4. Come and join us uh, with about 700 other practices. Uh, uh, and if you're not quite sure still, go to our website and have a look at the testimonials and see what you think. It's very easy to join up. Uh, it's done by uh, Go Cardless. Uh, just a few simple details. Oh, I nearly forgot to tell you. We charge £59.95 pence a month, and that includes VAT. That's the total cost of the system, and we don't rope you into a contract, and there's no joining fee. So you can come and go as you wish, and you won't lose anything. Thank you very much.